Yeah, my name's Ed Weaver, and uh, we're in Berks County, Pennsylvania here. And my grandparents started this orchard back in the early 30s, and over the years have uh, been becoming more diversified. We're growing mostly fruits here on our farm, and uh, the uh, tree fruits make up a large portion of it. We're also growing a uh, number of berries, including strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, blackberries. And um, I am the third generation. And I also have uh, my children, four children and, and wife that are working with me. And we really enjoy working on this family farm. Cherries have become one of the crops that I really enjoy growing and yet there were so many risks. There's three major risks to cherries that we've seen here. And the first one is early in the spring with the, uh, the, the frost when, when the cherries are blooming. And uh, the, the second, second main risk would be, uh, would be rains prior to harvest, within, especially within the last couple weeks prior to harvest. You get a heavy rain and you can lose the whole crop to cracking. The third big risk is birds and we were experiencing at least 50% uh, loss on the average and we decided that if we're going to grow sweet, grow sweet cherries we, uh, we need to find a way to protect them and so we decided to try the hay grove high tunnels on our sweet cherries to, uh, to protect them from um, numerous risks. We wanted to uh, test it out first on some an existing planting and so we had this, um, at that time, a four-year-old block of, of cherries, which are in this bay here. And uh, we said, hey, how about if we uh, try it on, on these here? They're, they're producing, they should be producing cherries right now, and, and let's uh, put a tunnel right here. Well, it did create a little bit of a challenge in working around the trees, but in being able to put it over an existing crop, we're able to see right away that year the benefits of the high tunnel. And the, the first year that we had it, we did have uh, uh, a crop in most of this high tunnel on these cherry trees, but we lost a lot of the cherries outside the tunnel due to, uh, I think it was about a four inch rain within a few days of harvest that just split the cherries wide open. And we lost a lot of our early cherries that year outside the tunnel, or I should say a majority of them that were outside the tunnel, inside the tunnel, less than 5% cracking. And that was just to the moisture that was in the area and, and maybe some around some of the edges that got a little bit of moisture from the rain blowing in. We have seen that within the, with inside the tunnels, the trees do have a little more vigor. They're, the temperatures inside the tunnel are a little bit higher and so we get a few more uh, heat units in there and get a little bit more growth but we've also realized that it's an environment that uh, protects the tree it's not under as much stress and for that reason then the tree grows more. We've seen a number of other benefits also we're, let, we're able to allow the cherries to reach optimum maturity and with that optimum maturity we have a higher a higher quality cherry that will have a longer shelf life has a higher sugar level and our customers are, are much more pleased with it in the spring if we put the the poly on the high tunnel early we can get an earlier bloom date and then with that earlier bloom date we're also able to get an earlier harvest date so we're able to bring those cherries into, into harvest at a time when the value of them is higher. And um, we always, always like the, uh, the highest price that we can get for our cherries. It's certainly appreciated. In the 50s, we started with uh, Pick Your Own Strawberries, and that continued real well through the 70s and in the early 80s. And then we began to expand into other um, crops that we grew and started to open up the uh, the other crops for pick your own and so currently we uh, we begin in early June with uh, pick your own strawberries 
and continue right through October with various crops including uh, blueberries, raspberries, of course cherries, uh, peaches, and uh, pears, apples, pumpkins, a uh, number of others. Wow. Customers can come and, and pick our fruits uh, under the high tunnels even if it's raining and it's only taken them a year or two to learn that and we're getting a lot of response even on a, on a rainy day people will come out and, and and do pick your own underneath the tunnels and and they love it you know what what a great thing to do uh, on a rainy day they can still go and, and pick, pick fruit the customer is able to come to the farm and they're they know that they're going to be able to, to pick a good quality cherry where in previous years they might be sorting through cracked cherries that have begun to decay and it just becomes a frustrating experience and they're even willing to pay a higher price for our cherries because they know that they're going to have a good quality cherry. We did find that there's some challenges, unexpected challenges with the high tunnels. One of the first challenges that we found was when we went to drill the legs into the ground uh, whenever we hit a rock, we ran a little bit of a problem, but that was overcome with using a jackhammer, drilling a pilot hole. We're able to, uh, to get the leg in and we won't have to worry about it coming out. One of the challenges uh, in, in constructing the, the hoops is uh, just the, the fact that you need to get off the ground up into the air there. So we had used a variety of... Uh, of platforms that we work off of on on top of wagons or trailers and uh, with the use of ladders we're able to get up there and, and do the construction. There are a lot of variables when we talk about the cost of a structure like this and for myself what I like to look at as a grower is what am I gaining and what is the value with that gain and just just roughly if I look at that it costs me about thirty five hundred dollars per year to to have this structure and that includes the cost of the structure that includes the the skinning and unskinning each year the the venting that needs to be done throughout the year so it costs me thirty five hundred dollars a year to have the tunnel then can I gain enough of value from that with this crop to to justify that cost and with the sweet cherries especially we we have we feel that we we can get enough gain there uh, with the sweet cherry crop mm -hmm.